Hey guys, Applebob here. Today, I'm not just going to be analyzing the events of Domestic Girlfriend Chapter 253, but doing a little bit more than that. I'm going to ask, how can a character go from being so shy to being so confident? We're going to look at Hina's story and Rui's story and their development throughout this manga. Rui never used to be so bold to express her feelings. She barely could even tell you what her feelings were. And Hina just kind of did whatever she wanted. What happened? Today, we're going to answer that. In the very first chapter of Domestic Girlfriend, Rui takes Natsuo to her room and pretty much just asks him to sleep with her. How's that being shy, you ask? Well, it's not really, except it is, you know, Rui was never intending to see Natsuo again. <clears throat> Intended, you see. Um, as we get to know Rui, though, she's just a really kind of prickly character. She's not the type of person you would want to go out to a dinner party with. She's really shy. She doesn't really say much. I know people are into that type, but at the same time, she just never really understood how to connect with people. That is until Natsuo began to sort of train her in this way. And here's a little funny clip of that. But, but uh, all in all, in the beginning, she was cute, but she didn't really know how to talk. Other than a couple episodes of Rui trying to kiss Natsuo, she pretty much just loves him without trying to do anything to clearly communicate her feelings. After his breakup with Hina, Rui was by his side the whole time. But did she ever say how she really felt, or you know, just make weird sexual advances. You see, when Hina broke Natsuo's heart, Rui wanted to be there for him, and she was really sorrowful about this. And when she tried to date Al, she thought that maybe replacing her feelings for Natsuo would, you know, work with another person. But it turns out that love doesn't really work that way. Take a look at what she says in these chapters. See, Rui only continues to grow from here. Do you guys remember when they were out hiking to that resort and it was really, really cold and then it looked like they were about to die, right? I mean, they're they're about to freeze to death, not souls trying to comfort Rui, and we see this old woman who saves them and, you know, she takes them back to her house and warms them up and stuff like that. They're super thankful, but eventually this woman's husband comes back from her travels and starts talking to Natsuo about some pretty, just some pretty ugly stuff, you know, about his girlfriend. And Rui overhears this, but instead of, I mean, you know, obviously she starts stomping out. She's like, I'm leaving, go home by yourself, blah, 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 blah. But eventually Natsuo tries to figure out what's going on and she actually tells him. She actually tells him that she overheard what they were talking about and that she's offended. Then the woman is able to give them the opportunity to clean up and, you know, talk about their feelings. This is such a crucial part of a relationship, and this is something that Hina has never done. Rui is so good at this. Another example is when Rui broke up with Natsuo. That was a painful time, an extremely painful time. But, it, you know, but 
I think this was a great step in clear communication because she didn't just take her jealousy for Serizawa and just stuff it and say, oh, it's fine, I'll get over it. She literally realized that she could not handle it and she felt like the fact that they were holding things back from each other, you know, Natsuo could have told Rui about how he feels like he can't write anymore, but he didn't. He felt comfortable with telling Serizawa that. So if that's the case, she felt like being broken up would be better. That's communication. That's something that Rui has gotten better and better at doing. And now, in chapter 253, I'm skipping ahead a little bit, but when she pretty much says, Hey, Natsuo, let me be the one to propose. That is huge. That is communication. And you know what? Like, I like that. So I think that in that sense, Rui has grown so much as, as a communicator. But, you know, Hina, on the other hand, let's take a look at sort of how she has fallen. Now, when this anime starts, you got to say, Hina is super bold. She's super confident. Who in the world goes out with a married man who says, oh yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you. Uh, I, I'll leave her, trust me, I will. Just not, not right now. Just give me, give me a minute. And she's like, okay, that's fine. You know, I'm gonna put myself out here, be all vulnerable. You know, you could, you could strike me down at any minute. Whatever you say, you, you know, you, you affect me. You know, I'm it's good. Who does that? Like, she really, really, really wanted it. You know what I'm saying? Like she was really in love with Shu, and I, I find that as a very confident thing. Now that's not like like a good thing, but it's a confident that shows that she's willing to communicate her feelings, not only just you know by what you say, but also with your actions, uh, and they were consistent. Even when she broke up with Shu, she was the one who made that decision. Her, you know, obviously, Rui and Nasua had something to do with this, but Hina was ultimately the one that broke up with Shu. She made that decision, and I think that that is really powerful. Now, as we keep going on, uh, and, and she starts dating Nasuo and stuff like that, she's kind of more on the, on the receptive end, honestly. I tried to look for times where she actually confessed to Natsuo, and the closest thing I could find was the letter? Her breakup letter? That's the only time she said I love you. Like, I just find that so weird. I mean, I mean, in this scene, she is kinda saying that she has feelings for him, but it is just so vague. I mean, it's not like she never like fully commits she says oh she has like these feelings and like she's afraid and all this type of stuff but honestly like she's net like not saying Natsuo I care for you I want you I have feelings for you I want to be with you from Hina's end you could argue she doesn't really do that until she says at the end of her breakup letter with him I love you how confusing would that be? And in that very same letter, she says, I want you to hate me, but I love you. I want you to hate me, but I love you. Like, like I know that she wanted him to go on and, and become a successful novelist and all that type of stuff, but do you understand that pretty much just dropping the ball on someone like that is, is really gonna damage that person? Because if they really love you and, and, and they believe that they love you with all of their heart, and then you say that you want them to hate you, do you really think that they're just gonna hate you? Like, just like that. Even when Natsuo finds Hina for the first time, she just tells him to move on, it's never gonna happen, even though she knew. She knew deep down that she was still in love with Natsuo. She even broke down crying after he left. But did she say anything? Did she ever apologize for leaving him like that? She's never found the time. She just hasn't done it. And, you know, I feel like Hina fans are 
really upset about this because she just can't figure it out. And I think the reason is that she is just so ashamed of her decision to break up with him like that. I think that that's the reason. But let's go ahead and move on to the chapter. In Domestic Girlfriend chapter 253, we see this powerful divide between confidence and fear. Rui obviously represents the confidence. She asks Natsuo if she can be the one to propose to him. Now guys, that's a really big deal <laughs> that Rui is going to ask Natsuo to propose to him. What a, what a display of just fortitude. Um, but in the very same chapter, we see Hina trying to dispose of her rings on the beach. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure Hina fans everywhere are crying about this, just like my last video. People are, are, are not happy about her face. I mean, it's, look at this man. Just, it's hard to see Hina like this. It's extremely hard to see Hina like this. But rewinding it back a little bit, I kind of want to talk about the necklace and how it's interesting that Natsuo offers to repair Rui's necklace only after they make up. You see, Rui's necklace was broken several chapters before by that disgusting chef, um, and Rui was obviously really heartbroken about that. But Natsuo and Rui were technically still broken up at that point. And also, you know, it's like the symbol of their relationship. But just like the necklace is the symbol of Natsu's relationship with Rui, the rings are the symbol of Hina's relationship with Natsuo. And she tries to throw those rings away. Now, I think it's interesting that she doesn't try to destroy the rings, because if you destroy it, then it's like there's no hope ever of the relationship coming back. But I think she's thinking that maybe if she throws it into the sea, Maybe it can wash up somewhere, and maybe there's some hope, but she can't even do that. She is stuck with her feelings, bottled up, and she can't, doesn't know how to express them. And by the end of the chapter, we, we get interrupted by a phone call. Hello? Hello? Yes? Who is this? Mm, who are you trying to reach? Well, of course, it's like anime, manga, all the time. The big, big conversation always interrupted. This time it's a phone call and Natsuo's mentor looks like he might be dying. This guy may not be around for too much longer. So um, I just think that this chapter is an incredible, incredible display. It shows just how far Rui has come in her communication and just how far Hina has fallen in her communication. If you're interested in hearing more about themes from anime and manga and how they relate to our lives, consider subscribing. Uh, give me a like. I will be covering other manga, anime shows, topics, all kinds of stuff. I have things planned. Um, please give that like button a like, and I hope to talk to you guys next time.